<clears throat> okay, morning. Uh, sorry, uh, good afternoon. So let's start our lecture, and we're uh, we introduced to the concept of uh, screws, fasteners, and power screws. Okay, and also the mechanics power screws. So today we're we'll look at is the stiffness of the body joints. Okay, and then from here uh, we'll go to the concept of basically uh, safety of the body joints. And uh, here's a, uh, a s uh, illustration of this uh, terminology related to threaded fastener. Okay. So, given a, a threaded fastener, okay, some of the important uh, parameters: the head, and here is what we call the washer face at here. Okay. So, this is the screw body. And this portion is called on threaded portion, and this portion is called threaded portion, right? So we have uh, different uh, uh, designations for the threaded portion. Thre on threaded portion is using L D at here. Okay, the threaded portion using L capital T. Then L D plus L capital T give us the total bolt length L. Uh, the usually is going to be a fillet at this uh, washer surface at here. Okay. Now, the screw body. Okay, if you remember, if you recall that, uh, we have this is what we call okay the major diameter. So we use a small d for the major diameter, right? And the washer surface. Okay, so basically, the diameter of the washer surface. So as we later will we'll, just, we'll know that we call that DW, and DW is approximately 1.5 D. Okay, so one washer surface. So we, uh, in the next uh, analysis, uh, this is basically what we're going to use at here. Okay. So other things like uh, you know chamfers, angles, so they're not that important. But uh, important is just remember, okay, there's LD, thre on threaded. Threaded length capital L T okay, and bolt length is L D plus L T. Okay? Yeah. So what is the uh, connection between the threaded length L T and the bolt diameter diameter D then? So here's the uh, formula for inch series, your L capital T is two D plus a quarter inch if L is less than six inch. Okay, so if the total length is less than six inch. So this will use. Otherwise, it's 2d plus one half inch if L is greater than six inch. Okay. Yeah. So we'll make use of these uh, formulas here. Okay. So this is for metric series. Okay. So if L is less than 125 millimeter, so you already will deal with this. is pretty long already. Then the L capital T is 2d plus six millimeter. Right. Okay. <coughs> So what do we what do we do with the uh, with the with the threaded fastener? So we use threaded fastener in a different uh, applications. One of the applications is we use it on the so-called tension joints. Okay, tension joints. So you use basically you use the fastener to uh, clamp a few members together, right? Yeah. So for example, you clamp a few members at here or two members at here. But in these two graphs here, the joints. Is what we call tension joints. <coughs> uh, this is pretty obvious because you got uh, eyeball uh, here. So basically, uh, you have two tension force, okay, so tension joint. And this is a pressure vessel, maybe. And so there is internal pressure. Okay, it's pushing um, upward. So uh, this joint in here <coughs> is also a tension joint, right? So <coughs> tension. Uh, you can also use the uh, I bought in some other applications. Let me see. Do I have it here? Yeah, I don't have it here. But the the other application is more of it's basically you have uh, uh, two plates. Okay. Then you basically use few bolts that are here, right, to clamp the two plates together. And you may have forces, okay, going 
uh, to either direction. So basically, the ball will feel this direct shear, right? Direct shear stress. Or some other applications is you maybe the force is actually if this is the void here, okay? Maybe the force is going down, okay? Yeah. So then the ball that are here will feel this uh, basically bending movement, okay? And a torsion, you know, shear. So. Uh, in this course, we're going to focus on these tension joints. Okay, so let's we'll focus on the application of bolts on the tension joints. Okay. So basically, when the, when when you use a bolt on the tension joints, okay, how do we ensure that the joints that are here is safe? Okay. Yeah. So now the first point that we have to make is what's the stiffness of this bolted member at here, bolted joints? So when we talk about stiffness of bolted joints, okay, uh, what, what we mean is we mean two things. One is what's the stiffness of the bolt? What's the stiffness of the member? So basically we need to deal with two things. Stiffness of the bolt okay, and stiffness of the members. <coughs> <All right. coughs> so here's a, a couple of uh, uh, concepts we need to know before we <coughs> calculate so this uh, stiffness of the bolted joints here. So for this one here, okay, you have a bolt at here, and it goes through the two mem uh, two members, and there are maybe two washers here and there, right? So basically, uh, under the bolt and the nut, how many members? One, two, three, four members at here, right? Yeah. Now, we have this concept called grip. So this total length from this end to this end, the L here is called grip. Okay, it's called a grip. Okay, so basically. The L at here represent is the total length okay, of the members being clamped. Okay, so this is the grip at here. Okay. If you use a, a screw here, okay, and just the screw goes through uh, one of the member, and then uh, there's a thread portion at here from the other side of the members, and then you clamp three things together. So it's a bit of different from this uh, from this case because you don't use a nut at here. Okay. So in this particular case, we have uh, we don't use the total length of the members as a grip. So what we use is we use a so-called equivalent grip. Okay, so we call that effective grip right here L prime. So L prime is called effective grip. Okay, effective grip. And what's effective grip? Okay. So in this case here, effective grip including what? Including the washer here and uh, the the length of the first member, okay, and then a little portion, okay, on the second member at here. Okay, that's effective grip. So how do we calculate this e effective grip at here? So we calculate effective grip using this formula, okay, in this formula. So L prime equal to H plus T two over two if T two is less than D. So what's the T two? This is T2. This is T2. T2 is the thickness of the second member, okay? And uh, T1 is the thickness of the first member, and T is the thickness of the washer at here, okay? Yeah. So H is T <laughs> plus T1. So H is the washer thickness plus the first member thickness, okay? So that's H then plus half of the H2. If T2 is less than D, that's your effective grip L prime. Otherwise, it's H plus D over 2 if T is greater than D. And D refer to the major diameter of the bolt at here, okay, of the screw at here. Okay, yeah, so uh, in one of the handouts in the previous lecture, okay, you have this formula in the table there, okay. Um, in this in this handout here, okay, if you don't have one, I have a, a few couple copies still there. So 
we're going to use this one, and you're probably going to use this one in one of the assignments here. In the example, but then we will use this example uh, to show you how to calculate stiffness. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now we're ready. Let's talk about the stiffness, the bolt first. Okay, or the stiffness, the fastener. So first. Stiffness of the fastener. So let's see how do we calculate the stiffness, right? How do you calculate stiffness? If you remember in the uh, in the uh, uh, mechanics material, your stress equal to F over A, okay, and uh, the strain equal to L minus L naught over L naught. Uh, which equal to delta over L naught, right? And uh, the sigma is also related to the Young's modular and the strain, okay, basically with this formula here. Okay. So altogether, the three equations, you put them together, you get your delta value equal to F L naught over A E, okay, over A E. So the Deflection, right? Basically, the deflection due to the external force uh, is the total force, okay, uh, by the nominal value L naught over the cross section area by the Young's modular. So, uh, the other formula you learned, basically, if you consider, okay, when you consider it as a supreme, so what do you do? Your F basically equal to k by x, right? k by x, so supreme stiffness by x. So if I look at this situation at here, so what do we have? Uh, basically, we can consider this is what? f equal to ae times uh, divided by l naught times uh, delta, right? Times delta, okay? So if you compare this equation with this equation at here, so the stiffness basically is which one? It's A E over L naught. So let's just maybe just use the L at here. Okay? Let's use L. Okay? So your stiffness, you can calculate basically stiffness using this formula. A by E by L. Okay? E by E by L. Okay? So now coming to the fastener stiffness at here. So let's take a look at this diagram at here. So this is my fastener at here. Okay. So we have we're we're going to use this bolt. Okay. For example, at here. So if you look at the bolt here, basically what we what we're interested in is uh, when you clamp the total clamp length or the grip is L, right? Is L within this distance L? Okay. Within this distance of L. You look at the bolt, there are actually two portions, right? One portion is what? It's this portion, which is unthreaded portion. And the other portion is from here to here, that's the threaded portion. That makes sense, right? So we use LD and LT. So LD, if you remember, actually we, we uh, define this. This is basically the unthreaded portion. And LT is the threaded portion, okay? Or the, let's call it length. Okay, length of a threaded portion. Okay, within. Okay, the clamped member. Okay, or maybe just within the tension joint. Okay, so that's the LT, right? So this portion is the threaded portion. <coughs> and then you have the force basically loaded up. So when you calculate the stiffness of the bolt at here, so technically speaking, the stiffness for this unthreaded portion is going to be different from the, the stiffness of the threaded portion. Okay. So what you can do is you can consider uh, this portion has a stiffness K uh, what do I call it? Uh, KT, uh, KD, and this portion has a stiffness. Let's call it KT, right? KT. So 
there's a stiffness associated with the threaded portion, the stiffness associated with the unthreaded portion. Okay? Yeah. So when you when you calculate, this is basically like what? This is basically like a, a two springs. Okay. Are connected in series. Right? Connecting series here. And this is a KD and this is KT. Okay. And all together you have the total stiffness, I think you learned in the vibration course, which is what? Like this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, two in series, basically, you consider like a two resistor par connecting parallel, right? So, the question is, what's the KD and the KT now? So according to this formula that we derived here, this is the formula for calculating stiffness. Okay. So KD equal to AD times E over LD, right? Over LD. Okay. And they have the same material, so it's just E the same thing. Then KT is AT times E over LT, right? Over LT. So, what is AD? What is AT? AD is the area of the cross-section area of the unthreaded portion, right? So, what does AD equal to? AD will be pi times what? Times, and this portion, what's the diameter? That's the, what do we call this diameter here? So, giving you a screw major, major diameter, right? So that's basically major diameter d over 2 square, okay? Square here. And AT is the stress area for the threaded portion. So AT is the stress area, okay, of this threaded portion. And this one, uh, in the previous lecture, we had a formula basically it relates to the pitch diameter and the minor diameter so in this case you don't need to calculate AT what you need to do is just go to uh, the table either A-1 or A-2 to find corresponding AT so if you are if you know that of course if you know the screw first right if, and you already you are given the screw of course so AT should be from either table A-1 or A-2. So one is metric, one is the uh, U, uh, US, U, UN series. Okay, yeah. Was that good? Yeah. So now everything boils down to the LT and LD, right? Once you can figure out what the LD is and LT, and then we can calculate the KD, KT, so we can calculate the total stiffness, all right? So here's the uh, next example. Uh, we'll show how do we find the value of LD and LT. So let's let's show that through an example right here. Okay. So we're gonna have to rely on the table that you have in the handouts, the first page. Uh, which table is this again? This is a table. Look at it. Uh, table A-7, okay, so so we'll use table A-7, okay, to find this AD, uh, no, AD, LD and LT, okay, yeah, so I'll show you the procedure right here, okay. so that was, let's use this, this example, okay, and uh, to find the LD and an LT. So we have a, a tension joint and we are using a ball to the here. Uh, the, uh, the, the information out of here is this. So the bot is M14 by 4. Okay, It's a hex head <coughs> bot. Okay. So uh, there, there are two 
different ways of this kind of equation, uh, this kind of example here. Some example doesn't tell you uh, what the length of the bot is. Okay, they just uh, say, hey, here is the bot that we choose here. Okay, it didn't say what the length they choose. Or the other school is they tell you the length. So basically, you have to verify if the length is suitable or not. Okay, so let's just say in this example here, I said uh, we use the length. The length is basically the L at here. So choose a length of 50 millimeter. So we don't know whether this 50 is good or not yet. Okay? Yeah. And the member, okay, there are two members. Uh, each member are 14 millimeter steel plates, so same member. Okay, both are steel. There is a washer to fit under the head. Yeah, so this is actually a little bit different here. So this this question here says so there's a washer. So the diagram is not that quite not quite right. So the diagram shows a washer here, but the question says there's a washer over here. But that's okay. Okay, no worry. Mm -hmm. So there's a washer out of here. Okay, there's a washer here. Okay, there's no washer here. Okay. So if you want to draw, you can just uh, uh, draw, you know, illustrate uh, something like this. Okay, something like this. Okay, that's okay. So the washer we're going to use is a 14R. So it's a 14 R. It's, it's basically uh, R represented as regular 14 because the bolt is 14. So the washer has the same designation as 14, right? Yeah. So we'll figure out we'll figure out one important thing is what's the thickness of the washer? Okay. So it didn't tell you the thickness of the washer is that we have to tell we have to figure it out. We will figure it out from the table. Okay. Yeah. So just a question mark here. Remember thickness. Okay, that which is the small t at here. Okay, small t. We need to know that. Okay. So that's all the information we need to know. Let's calculate this basically the stiffness of the bot of the fastener. So what do we need to figure out? We need to figure out this LD. We need to figure out this LT, right? Figure out this LT here. Okay. So first, okay, let's figure out each information uh, step by step. First is what's the length of the grape? Okay, let's talk about, let's look at what's the length of the grape first. So what's the definition grape? Grape basically is the total length of what? Of all the members being clamped, right? Being clamped here. So let's look at this situation here. How many member? We said there are three members, right? One, two, plus the washer at here, okay? So we have the thickness of the two members here. We just don't know the washer thickness. So what do we do? You look at uh, table okay, in the handout, okay? The last one, A-33. I'll just open the table out of here. Okay. So can you find the washer 14R? Did you find washer 14R? And find the maximum thickness of the washer 14. Ah, what does that tell you? Hmm? 3. 2. 3. 2. 3.5. 2.5. 3.5, right? Yeah. So 3.5, so which is right here, right? This one. Okay. 
So as a matter of fact, uh, you can look at the minimum inner diameter and the maximum outer diameter, right? That's also given, oh, sorry, this one, uh, for the 14R at here, okay? So basically, the washer, washer from A-33, we got our T equal to 3.5 millimeter, okay? 3.5 millimeter. So if this, this is the washer's thickness, then the grip will be what? 14 plus 14 plus 3.5, so 28, 31.5 millimeter. Okay, that's the grip. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now we have the grip now. So go to the table A-7, basically uh, the first table here. Okay, so what do we need to... Basically, let's look. You, we, we're going through this table here uh, to figure out the value LD and LT. Okay, so this is what we use. So you look at the LD, LT. LD equal to L minus L capital T. LT equal to small L minus LD. Right. So this is what we're trying to figure out here. Basically, what we need to know is we need to know the capital L. We need to know the capital L, cap, L capital LT. Okay, so that we can calculate LD. So let's figure out L T, L capital T first. Okay, L capital T. Yeah. All right. So the second one here is basically the total length. L capital T is the total uh, is the total length now. Uh, sorry, um, not the total length. Uh, L capital T is what? What's L capital T? Let's go to the diagram here. What is L capital T? Which is the thread length here, right? The length basically of thread, the total thread portion. Okay, that's L capital T. And L capital T equal to what? This is a metric series box. That's a 4 m 14 by R. So we're going to have to use this formula here. But uh, the formula here basically tells you you have to pick one here. So in this question, it gives you a suggested value of L, which is 50 millimeter. So we we need to basically we need to choose the first one here, right? We need to choose the first one. So the L capital T is 2D plus 6 millimeter. Okay, okay so uh, I'll just write a total length is less than 120 millimeter. Okay. All right. And then uh, the L T. Okay, so so length of okay <coughs> length of thread okay thread part LT is two D plus six okay two D plus six so D now comes to the question now D is what D is the major diameter so what's the D value 14, right? 14. Okay. 34. Okay, millimeter. So that's the length of the threaded part. Threaded part. Okay, so let's go back to this table again. Okay, go back to this table again. So you see there is a scene here. Fastener length L needs to be greater than uh, needs to be greater than L plus H at here. Okay, L plus H. So what is L here? You gotta be you gotta be clear about what each one of the variable here. L is what what do we call it? The grip, right? The grip. So what's the H at here? H is this bolt and uh, the nut, the height of the nut, right? not the height. So L we already have it. So we have to find what is the height of the nut. Okay. So that's a part uh, three. So height of nut. Okay, height of nut H. And this one you're gonna have to use A dash thirty one. Okay, so look at A dash thirty one.
8 dash 31 is right here. Metric series, so we need to look at this one here. So we'll look at M14. Uh, which column is H? So with H basically is this, 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 right? And what we have here is a regular hexagon type of a uh, bot or not. Okay? So we choose the third column here. So that's third column and 14. So H is 12.8. Okay, 12.8. So H equal to 12.8. For regular okay, hexagon. Okay, so once we find H now, then the number four is the bot length. And yeah, the bot length needs to be basically the bot length is total L needs to greet to be greater than L plus H. Okay, according to the table, L plus H. So L we find is 31.5. H is 12.8. And that equal to 40 44.3 millimeter. Yeah, 44.3 millimeters. So which basically saying for this current situation, your bolt length needs to be greater than 44.3 <laughs> millimeter. Okay? So then if the question didn't specify the length of the bot, okay? If it didn't specify, what would you pick for the L? <coughs> right? So you you had to basically as a designer you had to pick a length the length for the bot you're choosing. So what would you pick based on this requirement? 44 45, no, right? Uh, well, really, you ha you got to take a look at a table 8-40, 8-17, uh, which is not here. Okay, okay, 8-17. Remember what that table what that the table is? It's the nominal size, right? It's the nominal size. Okay, so I'm not sure it's 45 is there. Okay, the 45 is not there, but you pick basically the nominal size from that table. Okay, 8-17. Is that good? Yeah. But for the right for the, the for this question right now, it specified the bolt length which is 50 millimeter. So the 50 is greater than 44.3. So that's okay, right? So that's okay. So which basically a 50 millimeter. Okay. And that's is okay for this application. Okay, yeah. <coughs> okay, so basically what we're seeing is what's my capital L for this question? So what do we pick for this question? 45 or 50? <coughs> 50. All right, so we didn't change this, so that's basically the regional one there, okay? Yeah. So if the L is a 50, then number five, so you, you look at this, uh, you look at this uh, table A-7, the LD equal to L, capital L minus LT. So LD equal to capital L minus LT. And LD is the length of the unthreaded portion, right? Unthreaded portion. So there's quite a bit of a table looking up so back in the force, okay, flipping through the books. So 50 minus LT, LT is what? It's 34. So 16 millimeter. Okay. So once you find this LD now, then the LT equal to small L minus LD. Okay. And small L is the grip, and that's a 31.5. Then minus 16. 
and that equal to 14.5 millimeter. Right? No, not 15. Okay, so now you figure out LD and LT. So the last step is to calculate the stiffness. Okay, the stiffness. Okay. So. okay, stiffness. So stiffness. To calculate stiffness, we need to know the AD value. Okay. AD, and that's pi d over two and pi 14 over 2 uh, square okay, uh, which is 154 <laughs> millimeter square okay. and then AT this is from table A-1 and that's the metric series so A-1 look for the meter diameter 14 and so a dash one. So can you find the at? Which one should we? Is it a coarse? Basically, is it a coarse pitch series or is it a fine pitch series? How do I know? What's the current bolt giving here? Fourteen by two. What does the two here mean? What does the two here means? <coughs> hmm? What does the two mean? What is it? Pitch, right? So which means What's my AT value? Tensile stress area, 115 millimeter square. Okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So once we figure these two out now, then we can calculate KD. KD is AD times E over LD. And KT is AT times E over LD. All right, so what about the E value? The E value you can also find from our textbook. Don't remember which table now. But it's uh, a dash something, right? So the E value for this is a steel, so E is 207 gigapound. Okay. Yeah. So plug everything here. Okay. Do the calculation, and your KD. No, actually, I didn't calculate each one of them. So what I did is I just calculated the total one there. So K equal to uh, KD, KT. AD plus KT, which equal to ADAT times E over ADLT plus ATLD. Okay, so that's the total. And the total one is 867.24 mega Newton per meter. Okay, mega Newton per meter. So when you do this calculation here, uh, just be careful with all the units here, okay? So right now this is all millimeter, that's gigapi, so you actually uh, don't need to do anything. Just just plugging all the numbers into here, okay? So basically, what's AD? AD is 154, AT is 115, E is 207, so no need to change anything. You will end up with this unit here, okay? In this unit, mega newton per meter. 154 LT is 15.5. That's LT, yeah. Plus AT 115 LD 16. Okay. Yeah, cool. 
this is how this is got it here, okay? Mercury Newton per meter. Okay? Yeah. <coughs> is that clear? So that's the stiffness of the bot. Okay. And I can 100% guarantee that you will be tested in the final exam on this. Okay. Yeah. Every time I say this, and I can guarantee that uh, there are many of you guys couldn't use that table that we just gone through. Yeah. And nothing you guys, probably those who didn't come today. So anyway, uh, the other point I want to make is I think uh, you know you already this is this this is what I noticed by the end of the term uh, you are all pretty much stressed out, <laughs> uh, but uh, unfortunately final exam you already comes out is the last few lectures material right so you got to basically keep it up in here right yeah okay. Any questions on the stiffness of the bot? Okay. So now let's look at the second one, member stiffness. Okay. So member stiffness basically means, okay, let me grab a, a picture right here. So I'll grab this picture out of here. Basically refer to it's the mem the stiffness of the members being clamped out of here. Okay, being clamped here. Now tr the trick part of this is basically uh, the pressure distribution okay, <coughs> along the members that being clamped are not even. Okay. So then experiment shown by some researcher is the pressure is actually so-called a conical type of a pressure zone. Okay. Conical means, it means uh, the pressure distribution starting from this washer surface at here. Okay, so basically, this is the washer surface of the bolt right under here. And it, it's a conical distribution okay, up to the other end okay, of the washer surface on the nut at here. Okay, so that's the pressure distribution. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, the 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 angle of this cone, the cone at here, the alpha, as we're gonna li as we're gonna see that it's a thirty degree. Okay, there's a slight difference uh, from a different uh, resources, but uh, uh, but that's okay. Okay, so we'll use alpha at the thirty degree at here. All right. Yeah. So that's pressure. Pre remember, this is the assumption at here, okay? So pressure cone. Okay. The other assumption is the pressure cone at here is a symmetric. Okay, symmetric. So basically, uh, it's a symmetric about an axis at this location at here. Yeah, so the top and the bottom, right? They have the same shape geometry, okay, it's geometry here. So then, apparently, if this L is the grip or the total length of the members being clamped at here, then half of the pressure cone or the length of the half of the pressure cone is going to be what? L divided by two, right? Divided by two, okay? Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's actually one of the geometry. Okay, you you probably will make use of okay, when you do uh, the following calculations here. And secondly, okay, the pressure cone. Okay, when you draw the pressure cone, it's it always starts okay from the washer surface at here at here. Basically, this is the bolt head, and this is the washer surface. So you all you draw always draw starting from here, okay? Starting from here. In other words, the pressure cone. If you think of this as a sort of a like this shape here, okay, okay, then this length, okay, this length here is going to be what we call the dW, and dW is the length of the washer surface, the diameter of the washer surface here, and the dW equal Remember the washer surface, 1.5 times the d. Okay, 
times the major diameter d. Okay, yeah, that's another important thing. Okay, uh, you need to remember it here, right? Yeah, dW equal to 1.5 d. Okay, 1.5 d. So now, regarding the stiffness of the member, so what you need to look at is, you need to look at how many different members are being clamped okay, between here. So for example, uh, let's see the bolt, the, uh, the wash right here, maybe have a, have a different uh, uh, stiffness from, uh, or different material from this member here. Okay, maybe it's a cast iron, who knows, okay? So then basically that's one member right here, that's another member here, okay? And then up to this central, the symmetric center line here, then between here and here, okay, that's another layer, okay, another member here, okay, another layer. So what, we, what I'm trying to say here is we have basically so-called frustums, okay, frustum and frustum, okay, between the pressure, the pressure cone, okay, the pressure cone. So there are different basic layers, okay. Uh, the plural form is going to be frusta, okay. So totally, how many frusta do we have? That depends on the situation here, okay, depends on the situation. So now, the question here is, uh, if I can find the stiffness of each one of the frustum here, then I can consider them as springs connected in series, right? Connecting series. Then I can just use the regular uh, formula to calculate the total stiffness, okay? So the trick, basically the only thing that you need to remember next is, how do I calculate the stiffness of, a, of one frustum in general? Okay, so basically if I take one frustum out of this pressure cone, what will be the stiffness of that one particular frustum? All right, yeah, so this is what I'm going to show you next. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take one frustum, okay, out of this uh, pressure cone right here, okay? One frustum means you don't take it from here to here, okay, unless these are the same material, okay? In this case, let's just say they're all different material. So, for example, uh, this is one frustum here, right? This is one frustum. Look good, right? Yeah. So, let's say I take this one out, right? Take this one out, okay? So, what do we have here? This is basically... Okay, this is basically like this. Okay, and this is for one frustum. Okay, this is one frustum. So for the one frustum, I will use some general dimensions at here. Okay, some general dimension, and uh, I'll call the top. Okay, the top length as capital D. Okay, and the frustum thickness. I'll call that T. So those numbers, once we have the actual uh, dimensions of the actual system, basically actual information, we can figure out these numbers easily, right? Figure out this number easily. So capital D, small t, and also remember, uh, there is this bolt, okay, going through here, and that's the center line here, right? The center line. Okay, that's the D at here. That's the D. D. And also, uh, this is a, the pressure cone here is symmetric. So basically, if you extend the lines, okay, and they're going to be intersecting somewhere, okay, along the uh, vertical axis, and the angle at here, that's the alpha, same thing, alpha at here, and alpha equal to 30 degree we're going to use, okay, 30 degree we're going to use. So this trapezoid, okay, represents the shape of one frustum. So the stiffness of this one frustum, 
for this k, I'll write it here from uh, experiments and just some other calculation calculus, basically based on the calculus. The k, okay, equal to this, okay, uh, with alpha equal to 30 degree. Okay, I'll write. I'll just write down the last equation: 0.5774 pi e d over ln 1.155 t plus capital D minus small d capital D plus small d 1.155 t <coughs> plus capital D plus d capital D minus d that's the formula so this formula okay triple stars Okay. Is all you need to understand and all you need to know in order to calculate the stiffness of the members. Okay. So look at the formula. So what do we? Uh, what's in the formula here? E is the material stiffness, Young's modular. D is what? Measure diameter. Excellent. Capital D is the top length of the trapezoid, and T is the thickness. Okay, so that's what you the ge the geometry, the dimension here. You need to know to calculate the K at here. Okay, the K. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So now n the next few things. Just let us take a look at a couple uh, examples, some cases that are here. Okay. How how do we calculate? The stiffness, okay, of the joints of the members, okay, uh, based on this formula here, okay, based on this formula. So I'll give you a general case first, okay. Uh, you know, maybe not a general. Let's just take a look at this uh, different cases here. Let's take a look at case number one here, okay. So case number one is a special. Let's just consider maybe I I just have two members. Okay, only two members. Two members, same thickness and the same material. Okay, same thickness, same material. So what does it mean? Basically, you have a member at here, you have a member at here, okay, same thickness. So L L, let's call L1, L1 here maybe, okay? And then you have a bolt, there's no washer basically. Okay? And so there's no washer, okay? And that goes through here, and then you have a, a nut, okay, like this, right? Okay? So that's basically what this means here. So what would be the stiffness <coughs> for this case? Step always all the the steps are pretty much always the same thing. You draw the pressure cone, okay? Draw the pressure cone. So what if we draw the pressure cone here? You can either draw the pressure cone right on the diagram, or you draw it uh, uh, differently at a different location. Draw it. Draw a symmetric pressure cone, okay? Symmetric pressure cone. Yeah. Now. When you draw the symmetric pressure cone, always remember it the starting length. Okay, the starting length is how much? Is the dW, right? And dW, remember, is how much d? 1.5. Okay, yeah. So that's how you draw the pressure cone in here, right? Yeah. So this pressure cone covers the whole members that have been clamped. So in this case, there are just two members, right? Just two members. And if it's just two members, so essentially this line at here, and we said the same thickness, same material. So this line is basically this line at here, right? This line here, okay? Yeah. So then the next question is, you got to ask is, how many frustum, how many frust, basically, how many frust do we have <coughs> under this pressure cone? Right? So basically, one is this, 
the other is this. And because they are symmetric, they are the same material. So the stiffness calculated based on this frostum and this frostum, they should be the same, right? They should be the same. So we just need to calculate one. So then if this is a K1 at a here and this is a K2 at a here, so the K1 and K2 should be the same in this question, right? Should be the same. Then the total stiffness is the K1 in series with K2. So K1, K2 over K1 plus K2, right? Yeah, and K1 is the same as K2, okay? Yeah, so how do I calculate the K1? This is the formula, right? This is the formula. Now in the, when you use this formula, and, and all you need to do is, is a game of replacement, not game of throne. I love that theory, right? yeah. So what do you do? The capital D at here is what? DW, right? And the small d here, that's basically the small d. The T at here is the, the thickness, which is this portion. And in this case, that's the thickness of the member, right? Thickness of member. So if you have the actual value, just place that into here, you'll get your K. Is that good? So basically, what, what I guess you you <coughs> you kind of figured out now is, so you need to ask yourself how many frustum or how many frusta here, okay, under the the cone. What's the what's the trapezoid? Basically, what's the trapezoid for dimension of the trapezoid for each frustum, right? Okay, yeah. So if you can figure those things out, right, <coughs> you can calculate the stiffness very easily by using the general formula over here. Okay, yeah. So that's the case number one. Okay, so I'm not going to do any calculus, but uh, we'll just take a look at a couple of the cases because once you have the number plugged in, it's uh, fairly straightforward. Okay, so let's take a look at case number two. Uh, case number two is uh, same thickness but different material. I guess you know we cover there. Let's take a look at case number two. This one. Let's just say we have a, a different material, different thickness. So, sort of a two. Still, let's take a look at two members. Okay. Different materials and uh, different materials and stiffness and and and, and the thickness. Okay, so what do we mean by this one here? Basically, if I draw it, uh, they, there's a member right here, and then there's another member over here. Okay, so the first member is the thickness of L1, the second member has a thickness of L2. Okay, so L1 is not the same as L1, L2, and uh, the first thickness, the first material, let's say maybe it's a steel, the second one maybe it's iron. Okay, so that's basically different material, different thick thickness. And <coughs> we're trying to calculate basically what's the stiffness of this member uh, at here. Okay, yeah. <coughs> so let's just go over the process again. First step is to draw the pressure cone across the members that are being clamped at here, okay? So uh, here I, I simplified a little bit because I just kind of considered I don't have any washer, right? If you have a washer, basically you need to consider there's a washer here or here, so that pressure cone, right, needs to include the washer, okay? Yeah. So in this case, let's draw the pressure cone Okay, we'll draw the pressure cone here. And the center line <coughs> is somewhere at here, okay, somewhere here. All right. 
Okay, so now next step. Okay, so draw the pressure cone. Next step is to look at how many frustum or how many frusta do we have under this pressure cone. Three. So there's three. Why there's three? So you look at uh, basically the, 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 the distribution at here, right? From here to here, that's one frustum. And then from here to here, that's another one. And to from here to here, the same material, so that's, that's another one. So according to this geometry of the dimension, there should be three here, right? So three. Okay, three. Okay, if there's three, then we have to figure out the stiffness for each one of the frustum. Then the next step is to draw the trapezoid for each one of the frustum. Okay, each one of the frustum. So this is the first one here. All right, this is the first one. So let's say we <coughs> call it frustum number one. Okay, frustum number one. So for the frustum number one, if I draw it here, this is the geometry here. Okay, this is geometry. What's the top length of the geometry here? It's what? TW. Yeah. What's the thickness? Which is T equal to L1. Right? L1. Okay. And that's it. And that's the major information you need, then basically in this case, if I want to use that equation, the capital D here is this. The T here is L1, right? right? That's the two information you need to do the calculation. So just plug it into the formula and you can calculate this K1, okay? Frustum number two. It's this one here, right? This one. So this one here. So I'll still draw uh, this one, this this guy here. It's not that accurate, but it's the shape like this. Okay. So what do we need to figure out? We need to figure out what is this length at here, right? What's this length? And what's this thickness at here? Okay. So let's figure out the easy one. What's this thickness T at here based on the dimension? L1 plus L2. And then what? L1 plus L2 is the total grip. But you're, you're looking for which length? This portion here, right? This portion. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's a sort of a, a general drawing here, right? That's kind of based on L1 is less than L2, and the center line is right here. Uh, you really, in, re in, re in actual question, you got to draw this properly. Basically, you need to look at where this center line is. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Maybe L1 is basically, maybe this line is over here. Who knows? Okay. So basically, just. Uh, just make sure uh, this just kind of illustration here. Capital D. What's the capital D here? Uh, DW plus 2L1 and 30. Ah, so D, <laughs> let's just make it uh, DW plus 2L1 and then what? Sorry? 1030. 1030. Let's just see if that makes sense or not. Okay, yeah, I think that's right. So, capital D in this dimension here is which portion? From here to here, right? Or in other words, it's basically from the bottom of the previous frustum. The bottom of the previous frustum, it's a symmetric. So if I drop this over here, 
So this bottom here equal to what? Equal to the dw plus two of this and one of this is is how much? This is 30 degree. So 10 30 degree equal to this divided by this which is L1. So that's why this is L1 10 30. That makes sense? So that's how you get this. Excellent. Okay? Yeah. So plug this T and D into where? Into this general equation again. And you can calculate the K number two. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. First term number three. Okay, first number three. And that's this first term here. Okay, this first term. So that first term, it's upside down. Okay. Thickness, it's easy to figure out. It's half of L1 plus L2 divided by 2. Okay. So this is upside down. So when you when you when you use the capital D, the capital D is always the what the the small side here. Okay, not this big side. So this is your capital D. And this side capital D then it happened to be actually what? DW. Okay? Yeah. So now you have those all the information and you can calculate the key number three. So the total stiffness is 1 over K1, K2, and K3. Yeah? Yeah. So the challenge that I hear in my past experience is how would you properly calculate this capital D, particularly for intermediate thrust? Okay? And then there are many mistakes making here. Second is to use your calculator properly. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but there's always all different kind of strange numbers coming up, even if you're using the right formula. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't hurt that you can, you know, punch in the uh, the, the the formulas, you know, even before the final exam, right? Yeah. Any questions? All good. So calculation of this stiffness of the bolt, the fastener, and stiffness of the member. I can guarantee that 100% uh, that you it'll appear in the uh, final exam. So you should uh, exercise the assignments. Okay, yeah, number eight. And by the way, assignment number nine will be optional, and so it won't be counted for grades, but it will be counted for final exam. And uh, I'll just post it, uh, and you can <coughs> do a self-study on that. All right? Any questions? Yeah. So we have a one last a problem here regarding the bolted joints. Basically, it's the safety of body joints. So we don't have much time here now. Um, I let me just see. Maybe I maybe I can cover it next time. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll cover it next time. So then we have the welded joints. And the last topic is spring, and that'll be it for uh, uh, this term, right? Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the design project, uh, this this week uh, is a little bit tough. Uh, my son's kind of sick, so make a, send me an email to make appointment, right? So I'll try to come here. Uh, not probably not for a full day, but uh, we'll, I'll try to come here as much as possible, right? Yeah.